Welcome back for another video. Premier League footballers live and breathe football, but does that make them good at fantasy Premier League? You might be surprised to hear that many players, past and present, pundits and celebrities all play FPL. Thanks to the public nature of the FPL site, it's possible to identify them. In fact, this has even caused problems in the past of accidental leagues when a group of players in a team all sell one of their teammates on FPL. There's some excellent developers in the FPL community who have built great tools on this foundation. The insider trading bot tracks what players get up to each week, while fplbot.app tracks their seasonal performances. So which players are good at FPL and who's the worst? Do any of them own themselves? And what do they do when they own a player who plays against them? In today's video we'll be discussing exactly that. The best manager is James Justin from Leicester, with the team named Just In Time. In the 2021 season, he finished the season with a very respectable top 10k finish, and over the past three seasons, his average rank is 61k. He hasn't owned himself at any point in the 2021 season. He did start the season with his teammate Harvey Barnes, but got rid of him by gaming 4 after no returns. His 5.6k finish is the best among all footballers that play. Saka's a mystery, he's an intelligent player and perhaps an intelligent FPL manager. The 2021-22 season was his first season playing FPL, but he started in Gameweek 2. Despite that, by Gameweek 30 he still had an overall rank of 200,000 among 9 million players. Further to that, he was in the top 100 in the world among all managers who started in Gameweek 2. The 21-22 season was the campaign where Amazon recorded their All or Nothing documentary and the Arsenal players mini league he was in was aptly named Don't Tell Amazon. Mac Target got in trouble for an inappropriate team name, which FPL subsequently renamed to Change Name. He since renamed it to It's Coming Home. Target has one top 1 million finish in his career. In the 2021 season, the Villa squad infamously all sold Grealish, whose injury was inadvertently leaked early through FPL. This led to Dean Smith's infamous comments where he said, I don't play FPL, I live in the real world, not the fantasy world. It's likely that the Villa backroom staff asked players to change their name so they couldn't be tracked, as Target's name on FPL is now Bob Bradley. However, it's still easy for these websites to track these players through their rank history and other means. John McGinn from Villa also changed his name. He's somewhat of a veteran, having played for 9 years, and he has 3 top 1 million finishes. His team goes by the name The Meatballers, and he's an aggressive FPL player too, taking hits in roughly a third of all game weeks. He's owned himself for about two thirds of the season, and he's always tripping up on Villa players. Jack Stevens has played for the longest of them all. The 21 22 season marked his 12th year playing. His best ever finish was in the 18 19 season where he came 51k. An aggressive FPL player too, taking hits in just over 50% of game weeks. Stevens always steers clear of the standout captain if they're playing Southampton, which you have to respect. Martin Erdegaard's first ever season was his best, where he finished 836,000. In the 21-22 season, he was added to the game in Gameweek 2 after signing for Arsenal, and he picked himself up from the minute he was available for selection. Interestingly, he always vice-captains himself. Ben Gibson has played for 7 years, and he's among the best of the FPL footballers with a few respectable finishes, including 26k in 1516, 80k in 1718, and 104k in 1819. In the 21-22 season, he didn't own himself at any point, However, in Gameweek 26, he scored a huge 151 points, which did include Captain Salah, who faced his side Norwich in a double game week that week. Not his proudest haul. Maguire has a very fair 33k finish back in 16-17, but beyond that he hasn't had much luck in FPL. In the 2021 season, Man United had the famous triple game week. Up until that game week, he hadn't owned himself at any point all season, but he brought himself into his team only to go off injured in the first game. In Gameweek 22 of the following 21-22 season, Maguire sold Ronaldo, which he'd done on two occasions before when Ronaldo subsequently didn't play through injury. Third time round, he got a lot of traction in the media as there was a clear correlation to his transfers and Ronaldo's status. Maguire had deleted his FPL team that game week. If you're enjoying the video so far, please consider liking it to support the channel. Alexander Arnold has played for a few years, and in the 21-22 season, he owned himself from Gameweek 1 for the entire season though evidently he forgot about it or couldn't be bothered as he didn't change his team all season. It doesn't look like he gave his FPL team more than a minute thought with Dakar as his captain all season and Randolph vice-captain. Perhaps he even clicked autofill on his team and then never came back to it. Luke Ayling had the worst 21-22 season of all players by some margin. He gave up by Gameweek 12 and ranked 7.7 .7 million by Gameweek 30. It's possible he forgot to activate his wildcard in Gameweek 7 and then gave up after taking what looked like an accidental minus 44 hit. He has one top 100k finish in his career. So what about former players and pundits? 
Michael Richards has two top one mil finishes over his career and 21-22 his best ever season, ranked 395k after game week 30. He's in a head-to-head -head league with Daniel Sturridge and Gabby Gwondlahor, which he's top of. John Waters is infamous for the biggest disaster class in FPL history when he scored two own goals and missed a penalty in a 4 0 loss as a Stoke player in 2013. Unfortunately, he's not much better at FPL, finishing 2.3 mil and 1.6 mil the last couple of seasons. In the 21 22 season, he remained active, making moves all season, but had a rank of 1.8 mil. So, for the most part, it's a resounding no, footballers are not good at FPL. They've probably got far better things to do than obsess over FPL like the rest of us and only on very rare occasions do they have insider info of any benefit to them. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please drop it a like and hit subscribe. Links are in the description to the Insider Trading and FPL Bot app. See you soon for the next one.